In this lecture, we're going to go over the different modes of energy transfer by heat. So we're going to discuss heat transfer. Energy transfer by heat are induced as a result of a temperature difference between the systems and the surroundings. For example, if I have a hot plate, and I have a container of gas, the energy of the gas is increased even though no work is done. The net energy transfer by heat only occurs in the direction of decreasing temperature. So you can only make heat only goes from hot to cold. Heat can't go from cold to hot. The symbol Q denotes the amount of energy transferred across the boundary of a system by heat transfer. So we have our sign convention for heat transfer. Heat transfer into the system is positive. And heat transfer from the system is negative which of course is the exact opposite of the sign convention used for work. So like work, um, the value of heat transfer depends on the process and not just the endpoint. So heat transfer is not a property. The amount of energy transferred Q is the integral from state one to two of our differential heat transfer rate. The heat transfer, the net rate of heat transfer, Q dot, so our heat transfer is the integral from time one to time two of our heat transfer rate with respect to time. Again, to evaluate the above integral, we have to know how the heat transfer rate varies with time. Uh, another uh, heat transfer parameter that's used commonly is the heat flux, which is the heat transfer per unit area. So my total heat transfer rate is the area integral of my heat flux and my differential area. The units of heat transfer are the same as work. That's going to be your kilojoules or BTUs. The units of heat flux are kilowatts per meter squared or BTU per hour per foot squared. A system that undergoes a process that has no heat transfer, that process is called an adiabatic process. So if your system is insulated, you undergo an adiabatic process. And that's really a lowdown of the different, that's a really a lowdown of what heat transfer is. Um, next, we're gonna go over the different modes of heat transfer. So there's three modes of heat transfer. They are conduction, convection, and radiation. So conduction is 
um, the transfer of energy from more energetic particles of a substance to less energetic adjacent particles due to interactions between the particles. The rate of change of energy transfer by conduction is governed by Fourier's law. Fourier's law states that the rate of heat transfer in the normal direction is equal to the opposite of the thermal conductivity times the cross-sectional area times the temperature gradient in the x-direction. So Q dot is the rate of heat transfer across any plane. Um, it's QX because it's normal to the X direction. K, K is your thermal conductivity. It's a property of your material. A is your um, cross-sectional area, and dt dx is your temperature gradient. The minus sign is because the energy trans is transferred in the direction of decreasing temperature and you're usually looking at a temperature distribution that's opposite to that. So if we consider a plain wall, so if I have a wall and it has temperature T1 on the inside and a lower temperature T2 on the outside and that temperature varies linearly, Q dot X And my wall has a thickness L. So dt dx is approximately T2 minus T1 over L. And the heat transfer, Q dot x, is going to be equal to minus Ka times T2 minus T1 over L. As a quick example, we have an insulated rod, an insulated frame of a house, and the thermal properties and the temperatures are given, and we want to determine the amount of total energy in 10 hours. So we have a rod. Let me draw a better one. We know its dimensions. We know T in is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 10 feet long. K is 0 0.04 BTUs per hour foot degrees Rankin. And T out is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's 20 feet long. 
so q dot is equal to k-a-t-n minus t out over l, which is 0 0.04 BTU per hour foot degree Rankine times our cross-sectional area, which is 20 feet times 10 feet times our temperature difference, which is 68 minus 40. Note that since I'm doing a difference, I don't have to convert from Fahrenheit to Rankine, divided by our length, which is six inches. So our heat transfer rate is 448 BTUs per hour. The total heat, Q is the integral of Q dot T, and if we assume Q is constant, that's going to be Q dot delta T, which is 448 BTUs per hour times 10 hours. So our Q is 4,480 BTUs. So in addition to convection, the next form of heat transfer we're going to look at is radiation. And radiation is energy transferred by electromagnetic waves or photons. So conduction, you actually have to have two things that are physically in contact for conduction to occur. For radiation to occur, there's no intervening, intervening medium that's required. So the rate at which energy is emitted, QE, from a sur surface is equal to your emissivity times your Stefan-Boltzmann constant times your area times the temperature of the body to the fourth. Again, E is your emissivity, and sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which is sigma six seven times ten to the minus eight watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth is 0 0.1714 times 10 to the minus 5 BTU per hour foot squared degrees Rankine to the fourth and your emissivity can range from 0 to 1. So the net rate of energy transfer by radiation is sigma is epsilon sigma a the temperature of your body to the fourth minus the temperature of your surface to the fourth not surface the surroundings so as another quick example we have A body whose surface is has an area of 0.5 meters squared, and the emissivity is 0.8, and the temperature is 150 degrees Celsius. We put it in a large vacuum chamber where the walls are at 25 degrees Celsius, and we want to figure out the rate at which radiation is emitted. And then the rate at which radiation is exchanged between the surface of the body and the walls of the chamber. So again, the rate at which radiation emitted is our emissivity times our Stefan Boltzmann constant times our area times our body temperature to the fourth, which is 0 0.8 times 5.67 times 10 to the minus eight watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth. times our area, which is 0 0.5 meters squared, times our temperature, which is 423 Kelvin to the fourth, 
So our answer is 763 watts. I mean, 726 watts. Note that the temperature must be in Kelvin since we are raising it to a power. Our net radiation transfer is epsilon sigma a TV minus TS to the fourth, which is 0 0.8 times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth times 0 0.5 meters squared times 423 to the fourth minus 298 to the fourth, which is 547 watts. So the last form of heat transfer is convection and convection is energy transfer between a solid surface and an adjacent gas or liquid. It technically is a combined um, effects of conduction since they're in contact and the bulk flow within the gas or liquid. The rate of energy transfer by convection is governed by Newton's law of cooling, which says that Q dot C is equal to HA times temperature of the body minus temperature of the fluid, where HA is your heat transfer coefficient. All right, so that's it for our lecture on heat transfer. In the next class, we are going to start looking at the first law of thermodynamics.